Learning about Dr. Anandabai Joshi's story, I think I was surprised at how early, like the first Asian woman was able to get her medical degree. She did get married at age nine and got pregnant and had her first child. The child sadly passed away in 10 days. And I feel like that was her critical moment that defined that she wanted to make an impact. Her husband actually pushed her to get a medical degree. In her request letter, she said, there's no Hindu doctors and there should be one because women who are Hindu would feel comfortable being treated by a woman. She graduated from the Women's College for Medicine. She went back to India where she was appointed the head of a women's ward. Learning about Dr. Joshi showed a lot of similarities between her and my mom. There was a pause put on her education and like carrying out her degree because I was born kind of suddenly. She encourages me to continue to follow my dreams, to be a doctor and to get into the field that I want. What legacy will you leave? have similar um, beginnings as Anna Mae Wong. Uh, my parents also didn't understand why I would want to do something creative. They always told me, oh, I don't see someone like you in the media, so your chances of getting big is so low, like why would you even want to try? And Anna Mae Wong wanted to be an actress. She was born in America, but she was Chinese. Seemed like Hollywood didn't know what to do with her, so she was still given the stereotypical roles that I think made her feel infuriated. I think she was a very opinionated, passionate woman, so that also made me feel the same way where, oh, I could also be an actor in the media and entertainment. We have stories to tell. That's why we should be in the media to show that we have to raise our voices what legacy will you leave? Unwanged technology allowed us to move from giant computers that took up entire rooms to smaller desktop sized computers that you could have in your own home. Back in the 50s, if you turned on a computer, you could perform whatever calculations, logic that you needed, but when you turned off the computer, you lost all of that data. With core memory, you could persist the state, so if you shut off your computer, and came back to it later and turned it on, you would still have that data. One of the things that Wang Laboratories was known for was its use of word processors. Core memory was used to maintain the basic uh, random access memory, and as we stored data, they went into cassettes. Cassettes are sort of analogous to what we have as hard drives today. Computing has advanced so much in such a short period of time, and all it really took was one man with a vision to change the way that computing works completely. What legacy will you leave? Patsy Mick is one of those elders that you can look up to. She's amazing because she's one of the first women of color to be in Congress. Part of what Patsy Mick wanted to do is she wanted to go to further school and they wouldn't let her in because she was a woman. And so she said, fine, I'm gonna go to law school and change the laws, and change the books. The way that she was the first woman to pass the bar exam, you know, if you're facing a barrier, do what Patsy Mink does and just find a way to go around it and change the foundational rules that are setting these kind of systems of oppression in place. Coalition building is the foundation of the policy and advocacy work that we need to be doing. And so Patsy Mink's example of what she was doing even back in 1960, someone who was out there breaking barriers influences me and how I view what advocacy should look like. I think she gives a lot of hope to people like myself who want to go into policy making and want to maybe be an elected official someday. What legacy will you leave? It's honestly inspiring for me to see a figure like Philip Jason really do all the things that he was able to do in such a difficult time. He was always a big proponent for Korean independence and later on for unity in the Korean Peninsula. He was the first Korean immigrant to be naturalized in the United States. Particularly for my parents, I feel like they'll point out the fact that he was the first Asian American doctor. I think it is important that young Korean Americans know about Philip because it is important to know your history and know kind of how your community and your people started here in this country. But two, I think a lot of the things that Philip Jason was fighting for are actually still relevant today. Most likely the only Korean American or Asian American person in the room at times, representing a whole country on his shoulders. As Korean Americans, as Asian Americans, we're looking to raise our voices and carry through with that representation. What legacy will you leave?